Hello everybody and thank you for coming to another story time today. It is a beautiful day outside. I hope it's not too windy and that you can hear me. I couldn't resist reading outside for story time today. And our story today is going to be another story all about water. Um, water on earth is a pretty special resource that we need to protect. We all need water to survive and a lot of the things we use every day depend on water. We've had some other story times about water and we've talked a little bit about how the earth always has the same amount of water but it can cycle between different places and different states in something called the water cycle. And our story today is really going to delve into how the water cycle works. So behind me is Little Boy Lake um, in Longville, Minnesota and that water maybe is going to evaporate off this the lake today because it's nice and hot and sunny. It's going to go up in a cloud and it might end up on the other side of the planet. So we're going to find out how that works today in our story time. So without further ado, it's called The Great Big Water Cycle Adventure. It was written by Kay Barnum and illustrated by Maddie Frost. The Great Big Water Cycle Adventure. Did you know that the same water has been falling as raindrops for billions of years? It travels around our planet again and again. The journey it takes is called the water cycle. Are you ready to dive into the great big water cycle story? The sun is a very important part of the water cycle. The sun is out today and it feels so good. When the hot sun shines on our planet, the water in the oceans and seas becomes warmer. As this happens, the water changes from liquid into a gas called vapor. The water vapor rises because it is warm. As the vapor travels higher, it cools and changes from an invisible gas into tiny droplets of water and ice. When the tiny droplets join together, clouds form. As more and more droplets stick to each other, they grow bigger and bigger. The droplets in the clouds become too big and heavy to stay in the air. What do you think happens then? It rains. The water droplets then fall back to earth as rain, hail, sleet, and snow. My favorite. We call all those things precipitation. So water coming from the sky in any of its forms. Precipitation. When water lands on our planet, its never-ending journey continues. Where does it go next? This depends on where the water falls. If water falls into the oceans and seas, the water cycle starts all over again. So we see it raining onto the ocean. Eventually that water will heat up and evaporate back up into a gas, go up into the clouds, condense into the water droplets, and then fall back as rain. If water falls on land, some of it runs over the surface and trickles into streams. Small streams join larger streams. These flow into rivers. Some rivers and streams tumble and gush down mountainsides as waterfalls. This water travels back to the sea. And then we know what happens in the sea, right? The sun heats it up, it turns into a gas, goes up into the clouds, eventually comes back as precipitation. Some water falls or runs into ponds, lakes, and reservoirs. This water may flow onward to the sea. The sun may turn it into vapor again, or the water may stay put for many years. When summers are long and hot, more water turns into vapor. Lakes and rivers disappear. 
So we might see our lakes at various levels, depending on how hot and dry our summers are or how much rain we're getting. Water will also fall onto plants and trees. It may trickle into the ground and get soaked up by plant roots. This helps plants grow. Water droplets on leaves are warmed by the sun and turn back into vapor. We can see the droplets steaming. Some water falls on land and seeps deep down underground. It then fills the cracks and gaps between soil, sand, and rock. This groundwater moves slowly. It takes a long time to return to the sea. And sometimes we use groundwater, right? I live out in the country and I have a well, and that well digs down into this groundwater supply and that's what brings up water into my house. Some of you might use groundwater too, or maybe if you live in a city, you might use city water that comes from someplace else. Other times, water falls as snow. Yay! When it lands on mountaintops and in cold places, it does not melt at once. It may take a very long time to return to the sea. Okay. So, some of the world's water has been frozen for thousands of years. It is trapped in glaciers, which are slow moving rivers of ice. The water cycle does not always run smoothly. When there is too much rain, the water builds up too fast and then there are floods. When too little rain falls, there is less water in streams and rivers. This can lead to droughts. Did you know that most of the water on our planet is salty seawater? Only a small amount is the fresh water we need to survive. So we can't drink salty seawater, right? We need fresh water that doesn't have salt in it. And that's only a very small percentage of water on Earth. Over 7 billion people live on our planet. By using less water, we can make sure that there is enough for everybody. The Great Big Water Cycle Adventure never ends. Follow the arrows to see how the water goes around and around. So it says the sun warms our planet, water vapor rises, clouds form, water droplets fall back to earth. Streams and rivers carry water back to the sea, groundwater travels slowly back to the sea, and water is stored in oceans, ice caps, underground, and in the atmosphere. And that's the end of our story. It has some activities though in the back of the book which are all water related. So I'm gonna read through those quick because they're not very long. Um, and then I'll also link to our own list of activities and resources that we've been sharing with our water story times. And there's a really great water cycle interactive um, where you can kind of click on different pieces of the water cycle and make things happen. So that's another really great learning tool that will be linked to in our resources. So make sure to check that out. Um, but here's what the author suggests. Things to do. Number one, use watercolors to paint your own water cycle picture. Add arrows to show how the water travels around and around. So make something like this. You could even make it with your house in there or maybe your favorite lake or your favorite mountain. Personalize it, it will be super cool. Number two, make a water cycle game. Write a different stage of the water cycle, such as water vapor rises, clouds form, and rain falls on individual squares. Roll dice to move your counters around the board. Ooh. Number three, create a word cloud about water. Write water in the middle of the page. Next, add all the words that this word makes you think of. Write them all down using different colored pens. Start like this, and it gives an example. So they had water, and then they wrote sea and rain next to it. You can use different colors and make your words go different directions. 
different size words can be really fun in a word cloud. It says notes for parents and teachers. This series aims to encourage children to look at and wonder about different aspects of the world in which they live. Here are some specific ideas for getting more out of this book. One, encourage children to observe the water, how the water cycle works. Leave a tray outside and watch it as it fills with rain. On a sunny day, observe how the sun's heat makes the water evaporate. Number two, put on a play in which children pretend to be a water droplet traveling through all the stages of the water cycle. Ooh, that'd be fun. Number three, decorate a paper plate to show the different stages of the water cycle. Spin the plate to show how the water cycle goes around and around. Number four, ask children about saving water. How many different ways can they think of to save water? Hmm, what are some ways you could think of at home? Are you doing anything at home now that helps save water? Maybe come up with some things that you could do. Can children guess how much water is wasted from a dripping faucet? To find out, ask them to carry out an experiment by measuring how much water is collected in a cup after one hour. Mm. Any guesses? You'll have to do it to find out. So again, I'll put some other resources and water activities um, in the link with our story time down below. And we'll see you again soon for another story time. I hope you enjoy the beautiful weather this weekend. Maybe it will bring you somewhere close to water that you love. And spend some time thinking about how you can help the water, how we can help keep it clean, how we can help use less and maybe not waste water, and how we can help conserve this awesome resource that we all need to live. We'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.